this is it. We're going big scale when it comes to used adventure bikes. It's the BMW R1200 GS. The mystique and history of BMW cannot be disputed. And maybe that's why so many riders want to own a GS at some point in time. This model's a 2006, and it has roughly 80,000 kilometers on it, or 44,000 miles. When it was brand new, BMW claimed it made 100 brake horsepower. And today I'm gonna to tell you whether or not you should buy one for yourself. The first BMW Glenda Strass came out in 1980. It was the R80 GS. It was the first time that somebody had actually taken a touring bike and designed it to go off-road. The idea caught on and other manufacturers started making their own touring bikes with off-road capabilities. But it really wasn't until these guys went out for a leisurely 30,000 kilometer cruise and made a TV series about riding around the world on a pair of BMW R1150 GS bikes that the term adventure bike started getting thrown around. To this day, I still wonder what happened to the KTM executive who said, no thanks, we really don't want to be any part of this. Because of, because of what, what, in what, what uh, details? It is an adventure after all and um. And he's done the idea is that we go in, on an adventure, you know. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. They think that we might fail. And then we'll do it in the BMW and show them what a f***ing great big mistake the is. What a what a business. How dare they say that? So the question here is, why would you buy one? A bike built by a car company that does everything just a little bit differently than anybody else does when it comes to design. And then there's the cost. Don't get me started on how expensive BMW replacement parts are, let alone how expensive it is just to buy one of these bikes to start with. Then there's the question of maintenance and all those quirky motorad characteristics and the fact that you have to go out and buy a drawer full of special tools just so you can check your tire pressure. Okay, maybe it's not quite that bad, but BMW owners know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, you know. What a what a So I'm gonna break down what this bike is good at and what it's not so great at, as simply and succinctly as possible. First, let's talk about what the majority of GS owners do, and that's touring. As a touring bike, the R1200 GS is a good choice. The torque of the motor and the sophistication in the design BMW put into the suspension system means that you can ride two up comfortably and squirt the bike into a corner and not just be comfortable, but it's actually pretty fun. The riding position is comfortable for long hauls and the seat height is adjustable. Plus, for long-legged riders, or those of us who are vertically challenged, there's a host of BMW accessory plus aftermarket seats that will further increase or decrease the distance between your butt and the foot peg. Controls are logically placed, if not for the first of our motor rad quirks found on BMW motorcycles up to about 2013, I believe. If someone knows the exact year, go ahead and put it in the comments below. But of course, I'm talking about the turn signal switches. BMW uses left and right turn signal switches on the perspective sides of the handlebar. Now I've owned a few BMWs over the years and it still requires a conscious effort when riding this bike to remember how these signal lights work. One of the best moments riding a BMW for me was after purchasing my 2015 K1300S. It was the first BMW I owned that had a signal light switch just on the left handlebar like almost every other motorcycle in the market. At least the signal lights are self-canceling, which goes a long way. And it wouldn't be so bad except for the cancel switch located on the right handlebar. This switch is awkward to operate and even throws Harley riders for a loop. If I have a complaint about the BMW when it comes to touring, it would be the wind protection. Frankly, for a touring machine, it's not great. And the exposure of your lower body to the wind and rain and other elements is surprising. 
despite the fact that it has a, a flared front fairing and you've got this big boxer engine out in front of you. No wonder BMW makes some of the best riding gear you can buy. You're gonna need it. Your upper body doesn't fare much better, but what I do notice is my helmet doesn't get buffeted around in the wind with the windshield in a fairly vertical position. Based on other adventure bikes that I've owned and ridden, I would say that these complaints could kind of be a generalization of all of them. For some reason, the first time that I rode a GS in the rain, I thought the protection would be a lot better. When it comes to touring, I have one more general criticism when it comes to BMW, and that's the heated grips. Being up in Canada, uh, I use heated grips for about six months of our eight month riding season. So all of the BMWs that I've owned basically have two positions for their heated grips, not hot enough and way too damn hot. What this means is you have to cycle through the different positions in order to ride comfortably. Now, what I've done to combat this is just gone out and invested in a good set of uh, waterproof insulated gloves for when I wanna ride to elevation or when the weather's just not cooperating. So now let's talk about what everybody thinks they're going to do on their GS, and that's ride off-road. To be honest, I'm not sure why anybody would want a big displacement GS to do anything other than the occasional gravel road. I equate riding this bike off-road in places that I would normally just take my Tacoma pickup truck. It's not an easy bike to ride in extreme environments. In fact, it's a downright handful. At curb weight plus luggage, we're closing in on 600 pounds here. Not exactly what you would call flickable, a term I learned as a kid reading Dirt Bike Magazine. In sand and loose gravel, the weight is particularly felt as the bike squats and digs itself into a hole. I now have a really sincere appreciation for what Ewan and Charlie did on their 1150 GSs, which by all accounts is an even heavier model than this one. If you're looking for a bike to explore every corner of the backcountry, there are so many others out there that would do a better job than this one coming in at a fraction of the price and only 60 or 65% of the weight. Most importantly on those bikes, when you go for a spill, and you know you will, it'll cost a fraction to repair and maintain them. Now I'm not saying you can't go out and ride your own version of the Road of Bones on a GS. I'm just saying that there's a lot of other bikes in the market that would do the job a whole lot better. Riding this bike in extreme conditions is a bit of a workout and I find it difficult to relax and enjoy what I'm doing when the trail disappears and I start worrying about how much effort and money it's gonna to cost to repair something that I might break. So if I were to sum up the R1200 GS, I would say it's a very good tour. Not excellent, not by a long shot, but it is comfortable and very easy to ride for miles and hours and miles and hours on end. It's a reasonable dirt road bike. And if you live a half mile from the nearest asphalt, and the only way to get to that asphalt is through some questionable road services, this may be the best bike for you. It can easily do both gravel and highway without rattling your teeth or your nerves. But as far as actual off-road, all I can tell you is the truth as I know it. And for me, my 1200 GS is not my first choice. Having taken several bikes to places that I probably shouldn't have, I know that this bike is just far too much work to get to those places for the reward. So that's it, my straight up review of the R1200 GS. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you like. Also, if there's a bike out there that you would like to see reviewed on Rod's Rides, leave that in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. If you like these sorts of videos and want to support us, all you really have to do is give that thumbs up and share this video with your forum or subgroup. And for more, check out the channel page and don't forget to subscribe. We will have more videos in the coming weeks and until then, be sure to ride safe.